welcome back to the Trogley's Guitar Show. Today, a 2019 Gibson. You can use this beautiful episode guide right here to skip to the parts that you want to see, but let's unbox this guy. This is a model that I didn't think I was initially going to review since it really didn't appeal to me at its launch. However, since I did receive many requests to feature it, I picked up this one to do a review. All right, so we have a really large gig bag. Ooh, it's the Explorer 2019 Tribute model. So essentially the main gist of this guitar, it is a less expensive Explorer that is a tribute kind of to like the 80s versions with Dirty Fingers Plus pickups. Case candy wise, we have the pre-pack checklist warranty, the baby photo. Looks like we've got a strap, warranty information, owner's manual, polishing cloth, which apparently stains your guitars. And yeah, I guess these guys don't get a multi-tool. You just get a crappy little truss rod adjustment tool. So first impression here, um, you know, the fretboard definitely needs some conditioning here as they usually do. It's a really thin neck profile, but I like the finish on this thing. It's not quite a full gloss, but at the same time, it's not quite what I would consider a satin finish. It's kind of a nice in between and I don't see anything to really complain about at this time. And I love that mother of pearl logo. But let's go ahead, throw it on the workbench and take a closer look at the detailed specs before we get into the playing demo. When the Explorer was first released in the late 50s, it was introduced with a Carina body and neck. While not successful at first, these really picked up in popularity around the 70s and 80s, and Gibson re-released them in 1976 in a limited edition run, which then led them to be made throughout the rest of the 70s and 80s. Around 1984, a new style of Explorer with alder body and dirty fingers pickups were introduced. Alright, I've got to prepare to look at its parts now. The pickups that are stock in the Explorer Tribute are the Dirty Fingers Plus. These are hot ceramic pickups that are wax potted. You can see they also have the patent applied for decal right there, right to the side of these. So the neck is called the rhythm, and then obviously the bridge position, the lead. As far as pickup readings within the circuit, the bridge is ohming out at about 16k ohms, and the neck is a little less hot at about 15 and a half. And then in the middle position, around eight. Within the pickup cavities themselves, you can see you've got a nice long neck tenon here. I didn't see anything too strange going on here. And then the bridge pickup route. What I thought was interesting is this doesn't seem as deep as a regular Explorer, but you can see it has some sort of model marking. I can't quite read what it says because the black paint is over it, but it likely means, you know, the Explorer Tribute 2019. And the outsides of the pickups also read Dirty Fingers Plus on the bottom bobbin. Another thing to notice is you have two rows of adjustable pull pieces, so you can adjust that. Something I was really curious about this model was if there was actually going to be routing for a pickup selector switch right here as you would normally see on an Explorer. Because generally you have like two volumes and a master tone and your pickup selectors right here. This model, it has a master volume with a master tone, and right here is your pickup selector switch. But I was surprised to see they still routed the body out like this, so that means it probably has the same template as the slightly higher end Explorer that they offer for $300 more. So modding potential here is now very great if you wish to have it in the traditional location. You just gotta route a little spot out of your pick guard. So that made me happy to see. The bridge and tailpiece are standard advanced plating incorporated parts. You can see the API right here. This is a Nashville style bridge with black hardware. That's kind of the other theme with this one is it's going for that gothic funeral look with all black parts. And this is a full weight tailpiece. The fretboard on this one is rosewood and we have 22 frets. So kind of standard Gibson stuff here. There's no fancy binding, there's no fancy inlays, it's just dots. I actually kind of like the look of this rosewood. It was a little bit dry, so I conditioned it with some Dunlop 65. 
This nut looks really ugly though. It just doesn't look professionally installed to me. As far as fret sprouting, um, there's very minimal. I don't think we can really blame the factory. It's kind of cold here in Ohio yet. So that might be the cause for a little bit of this, but it's definitely nothing that really is going to inhibit play. The nut width measures 1.69 inches, which then increases to 2.06, which is a really wide feeling. First fret neck depth of 0.88 inches. And here's the big kicker, 0.9 inches at the 12th. So it stays very thin pretty much the entire neck. As per usual, Gibson is rocking the 24 and 3 quarters inch scale length. With the blank truss rod cover removed, you can see the truss rod channel in here. Everything looks good there, no long threads or anything. And we've got black Grover tuners and you have a Gibson Mother of Pearl logo. Moving on to the back side of the instrument, I was very happy to see hand wired pots. I don't believe Gibson has ever developed an Explorer PCB system, so that's the only real reason for that. But master volume, master tone with a Gibson branded pot with a three way toggle switch here. And you've got a tiny little blue capacitor right there. And not too much going on with the back plate. Gibson is advertising this as a satin finish, but I think what makes it feel slightly glossier is because there is like a grain fill. So you can still see the wood grain, but you can't necessarily feel it. This is a really nice, smooth, but yet semi-glossy at the same time feel. The back of the neck is also a very similar feeling, so if you hate the sticky gloss nitro stuff, if your hands get sticky anyways, then that is something that you would like about this model. Now keep in mind this was a B stock, so you're going to have a few small imperfections on this one. We're not really going over the condition too much. But we have Made in USA 2019 model. You can see right there where there is a seam where this was kind of grafted on as how they construct the headstock. Usually there's like a tiny one right there as well. And here is our serial number 19, meaning 2019, and then that's the production number for this year's model. This example weighs 7 pounds, 10.3 ounces. Now that we know the complete specs of this instrument and have fresh 10 gauge Diodarios on here, let's go ahead and hear how this one sounds. <laughs>
So now that we know the specs and how this instrument sounds, how do I feel about it? I honestly was not expecting to like this guitar as much as I did. I mean, it's not necessarily what I normally go for. I mean, this is the whole blacked out vibe, but I mean, there's some pros and cons we can talk about here. First, I really appreciate the fact that they put the Mother of Pearl Gibson logo on it because it makes it a little bit more fancy looking. However, at the same time, it doesn't really match the theme of this instrument. I mean, this is kind of like bare bones, metal rocker type thing going on. I think they probably could have got away with a silk screen on this one. Another touch I like is the multi-ply pick guard. It really kind of helps set the guitar apart, I think. I really like the way the finish feels as we've been talking about, and it sits well on a strap. I mean, it's not neck heavy or too heavy this way or anything. As far as the tones went, I was surprised by the cleans. I really liked that middle position. It was super chimey. But something I noticed, I mean, again, these are hot ceramic pickups. I really had to dial my amps settings back a little bit because they'll drive your clean tones into like this weird crunchiness, which wasn't necessarily what I was trying to demo at that time. But as far as overdrive, it definitely takes that very well. Bridge pickup just screams. It'll do pretty much whatever you want it to. But the middle position and the neck position, now granted my main amp that I use for distorted tones is out right now, but I thought they were really muddy sounding. But I mean, once you start doing solo stuff like what those are meant for, then it sounded pretty good. So what are the cons of this instrument? I think $13.99 is way overpriced. And I get it, Gibsons, they're expensive. It's what I exclusively deal in. And I'm not one normally to complain about pricing, but it just doesn't make sense. This comes with a gig bag. It doesn't even get the multi-tool. It's a satin finish instead of full gloss. I really think they should have just did a silkscreen logo and priced these at $9.99. They would have sold tons of these things. That was the main reason why I didn't really care about this guitar at launch. The price was just too much. If they came with a case, I would have no problems with that price. But for $300 more, you can get the upgraded version of this Explorer, which has a beautiful natural finish and you get a case. But what is kind of interesting right here is this is basically a government series Explorer reissued. It has the same pickups. Uh, these ones will have silver lettering instead of gold like those ones had, but it's mahogany body. It has a mahogany neck with rosewood fretboard. Again, the logo is an upgrade compared to that, but I mean, these are very similar instruments. So overall, I can definitely see how somebody would sit down with this in a guitar store and just fall in love with it because it really is a fantastic playing and sounding instrument. So I'll give it like an eight out of 10. Thank you troglodytes for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.